I'll let you know when you start. That was good timing. Okay, competitors, you can bring up your slideshow. Um, once you start speaking, I will start the time and you may begin your presentation. I come from a long line of painters. There's actually a painting in my house that uh, my great grandmother did in 1899. My little sister and I absolutely adore this painting and it's actually inspired us to become artists ourselves. I decided to go into the performing arts and my little sister went into the visual arts as a painter. And she's actually now taking it to the next level by becoming a professional painter but it really hasn't been easy for her. My sister is a local independent artist who really doesn't have a lot of opportunities to sell her art. So in under, other words, she's an underserved local artist. And right now she has to deal with galleries that are taking huge commissions from her. And it's really difficult for her to sell any paintings without having some kind of representation. It really doesn't make sense that so many talented, underserved artists are suffering from low sales when there's a huge market of almost 11.5 million Canadian buyers of art. So that's why we decided to create Mosaic. Mosaic is an online marketplace that connects underserved local artists with interested art buyers. Some reasons why this platform is so great is because it focuses on the local independent underserved artists. It charges them a very low commission fee of only 10%. And we focus on affordable art, specifically art that is under $5,000 in cost. And one day we want to build the largest art distribution network for underserved artists in the world. Investors, my name is Christian. And I'm joined here today by my co-founders, Will and Sang, and we're asking for an initial investment of $451,000 in exchange for 35% of the company in order to bring Mosaic to life. And we promise you that you will see a return on your investment of 421%. Now, our vision might seem grand and we we'll promise a high ROI, but let's get into how it works. So on the left, you can see a mock-up of what the portal would look like for our painter, Christian's sister, Kate. She can look at some of the things involved with her statistics, such as her last sale, price trends, and annual performance, as well as a portal in order to verify the authenticity of her paintings to ensure the smoothest transaction possible. We verify authenticity through, through met two methods. One is identification verification to ensure that she is a real person uh, using government ID and ownership verification, which takes place in the form of a video of her holding the painting. In terms of payment, she is allowed to set her desired price as long as it's below $5,000 and she receives 90% of the proceeds. That's 20 to 50% more income than other channels. Now you can see the mock-up of what it would look like post-sale. So the buyer, Corey, uh, his contact information is listed below, has purchased the painting Crashing Waves for $3,000. And at the bottom, she can track the location of the parcel and in what stage of transportation it's in. Why do you need this? Is to realize revenue. So to ensure that our transactions are as secure and uh, satisfy both parties as much as possible, you only receive proceeds from sales once the buyer has received the painting and the buyer is satisfied with the item. And after that, just rinse and repeat. You can sell as many artworks as you want. And as you sell more, you'll be able to build your reputation in that world of art without the barriers to entry that previous methods meet. On the buyer side, Corey, as we see from earlier purchased Kate's artwork, has a couple of indicators that he's chosen in order to curate his artwork. So when you open an account with Mosaic on, for onboarding, you'll take a quiz that identifies five metrics, medium, color, price range, size, and style to identify what your taste in artwork is and therefore allow us to provide the best suggestions for curated art pieces from these local artists. Now you'll see the payment window for Corey. You can see that we offer a variety of different payment methods as well as being able to keep track of your orders, whether they're pending or paid. We believe in the flexibility of payment to ensure that the buyer has the best possible way to purchase local artists' artworks. We offer credit and debit card, PayPal, and bank drafts that are all secure methods of payment that we can ensure there's integrity throughout the platform. To further this method or to further this objective, we have a satisfaction guarantee. There's a five-day full refund window 
if there's issues with things such as damaging transportation or issues with uh, misrepresentation of a listing. We hold the money of the buyer until delivery is confirmed and that satisfaction is confirmed. So what's the value proposition of Mosaic? There's a dual prong value proposition on both sides of this marketplace. For the artist, it means lower commissions resulting in higher income. That's 10% commissions compared to the industry average of 60% commissions. That's 50% more money into the artist's pocket. There's easier access to willing buyers, meaning that you do not have to spend that time and effort in order to promote yourself using whether it's your social media or website. And because of our virtual marketplace model, there's no location constraints, meaning that you can produce art and sell it wherever you are. For the buyer, we provide original exclusive artwork by local artists. Are you tired of having that mainstream art and you want something special? That's where we come in. We sell them at affordable price points for under $5,000 and we offer a comprehensive buyer protection package that allows you to be as satisfied with your purchase as possible. We've identified a couple of competitors, mainly being Saatchi Art, which is the biggest online art marketplace, and Sotheby's, which is a high-end uh, auctioneer of art. So our value lies, or competitive advantage lies, in two aspects in terms of artists. We provide that low commission that we talked about earlier and low monetization barriers. Unfortunately, this is not possible for Sotheby's considering that their art requires a certain threshold of X million dollars. For the buyer, we provide that competitive advantage in that high variety in local artist focus. We have hundreds, we plan on having hundreds of different artworks from various local artists on the website and focusing solely on this local idea, which other uh, competitors are unable to do. An important part of any business is how we make money. And in the case of Mosaic, the two places where we generate revenue are from the 10% commission fee from artists, as well as the $85 service fee that we get from the buyer. Together, this makes up our top line revenue. Now, taking a look at the value we derive from that service fee, every time there's a successful sale, the consumer will pay an $85 service fee. $70 of this goes to the artist as a subsidy from us in order to help them pay for packaging, transportation, handling, etc. And at the end of that, we take $15 for ourselves of the service fee. Now, looking at the value we derive from an artist being part of our platform and our community, uh, we believe that the artist's lifetime value is approximately $3,000. This is working under the assumption that while they're on our Mosaic platform, they'll sell 20 paintings. The average value of the painting is approximately $1,500, which means we're going to be taking a approximately $150 commission. Now, taking a look at the, yes, Brent. So just on that last slide, your average uh, painting 1500. So obviously there's some that are gonna be lower than that, uh, say a few hundred bucks or something. Do you think the flat uh, $85 service fee might be prohibitive to sell some of the lower end product? Yes, so our, our average is based on the fact that we sell $5,000 and lower. So we average it to be about uh, $1,500 as our average selling price. That's what we, we base it on. Uh, in terms of the lower art prices, uh, we want to make sure that our artists are able to properly transport and sell all of our goods and services. And oftentimes, in order to, to meet the, the rates, uh, that is the necessary cost in order to safely send uh, artwork in good condition. Yes, Brianne. I'm muted. Sorry, I'm just trying to understand the 1500 because 3000 divided by 20 is 150. So how did you get to the average painting of 50? Our $1,500? I'm just trying Yes. To... So on our platform, the upper end is $5,000. So in our distribution, we imagine that there are less paintings in the uh, $5,000 range and more paintings that are closer to the $1,000 range, which means that the, the median in our distribution curve is approximately in the $1,500 range. And that's what our consumers, which Sang will be talking about earlier later on, are going to be interested in. Okay. Sorry, I know you answered that. Brent asked a similar question. I just didn't know if there was a art market. We would see top line revenue of 40 million. And if we were to go in, support all of the underserved artists that are currently in Canada, we would see top line revenue of $25 million. So as a two-sided online marketplace, we serve two users. Let's talk about a Christian sister, Kate O first. Kate is an underserved artist in Kamloops who have been working part-time as a barista so she could support her dream of pursuing art full-time. She has talked to a few galleries, but either got rejected to, due to the lack of credentials um, or asked to pay. Oh, Brianne, do you have a question? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so Kate, 
has talked to food galleries, but has been rejected either due to her lack of credentials or asked to pay 60% in commission. In reality, she doesn't want to deal with gatekeepers and their politics. She wants to focus on creating. So to reach artists like Kate will be uh, attending local art fairs such as Small Works uh, by the Kamloops Art Council, will also be performing warm and cold outreach by uh, reaching out to community groups on Facebook as well as Reddit thread where artists come to discuss such as Kamloops Creative Community Group. And we'll also be going to art school like Thompson River University to put up posters and advertisement of mosaics so that we can really get uh, in there early with the new graduates and uh, student artists uh, who are just entering the art market. When we do get this first uh, initial set of customer, we'll be collecting the video as well as text testimonials to repurpose on our website as well as our marketing materials. A few key KPI that we'll be tracking include the number of painters on, on our platform, the average order value, and the customer. But that serves a different customer segment. Uh, if we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars and perhaps even millions, it's very likely that the buyer would want to see the art in person and they would likely have to go through traditional um, means like uh, art galleries. But in with this bigger transaction, the commission cut obviously um, takes less of a toll on them. So uh, to quickly answer that, I guess um, we wouldn't be serving higher end customer segment. Um, and I'll let Will answer um, the second part. Yeah, so we uh, have recognized the fact that there is this offside, but we believe that because of our customer segment, which is more, you know, on the lower end of things under $5,000, that there isn't that sort of loyalty associated with, let's say, like, uh, you know, higher end paintings. And even if there are offsides, uh, once again, as uh, Sang mentioned earlier, uh, we are working in support of those artists. So if they want to go out and expand their business, we won't necessarily stop them from doing so. However, we believe that uh, to get artists started under that $5,000 range, that we will be making enough uh, money from our existing artists to be able to overcome that maybe like a couple of, of clients that would go offsite. Uh, Brianna and Luke, uh, do you guys want to go ahead with... Hey, Luke, why don't you go first? I already asked one, so I'll go after. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious, how do you plan to compete against the likes of a Minted or an mm -hmm. Etsy? Um, typically, you know, um, I may fall into that household mm -hmm. demographic. And if I'm going to look for art, kind of first thing that comes top of mind are those two websites. So then be uh, drafting out all the legal side of things. Um, next on the launch phase, we'll be utilizing the strategy I mentioned earlier, so reaching out to schools to partner with them, um, using social media, running ads, doing outreach uh, to really reach this first customer, and then scaling up from year three onwards with more spending on, on marketing and um, going up from the local to the national level. So for example, going from Kamloops to like Ontario to Quebec, and we'll be hiring business development as well as customer service from year four onwards to support with that effort. And to um, scale, we'll be expanding to uh, other provinces across Canada and also hiring curator, which we'll can touch on in a bit. Excellent. So at the beginning of the pitch, we asked for $451,000. We know that's not a small amount of money. So this is how we plan to utilize it. That 451K will get us through 6.5 years of runway. 26% of it is going to go into our support staff. 34% of it will go into our salaries. We plan to take very small salaries and further compensate ourselves in equity as we believe in the growth of this company. In terms of growth, over a 10-year horizon, you can expect to see that in that 10th year, there will be over 16,000 artists on the platform and approximately 1.6 million users. The sales we derive from that are approximately 7.54 million. And this is conservative because we anticipate that 2% of those sales are going to utilize the return policy. So of course, we recognize that no startup is...